Welcome to Adapting Class. There's some drugs for the end class that you're supposed to know about the drug classes, the key features, what is going to ask you that. So I'm going to set some questions related to that. This will be a series. If you didn't know, Adapting Class, um, these questions are short. I'll be straightforward, give you the key facts. Which of the following the nation should prioritize? This is prioritization 101. You got to be sharp. Okay. If you know B sharp, check out our tech grace for prioritization strategy. A client with chronic asthma is prescribed trophilin. Buzzword trophilin. You have to know the side effect of trophilin. There's a bunch of side effects. One of them is the key fact is, is a bronchodilator. So if it's a bronchodilator, it looks like asthma, um, being treated like asthma with the abudro, right? So bronchodilator. And what does bronchodilator do? They speed things up. You're not going to be bradycardia. You get tachycardia, like a abudro, right? Your blood glucose will go up. Your deep tender reflex doesn't go down. And seizures are one of the common side effects of that. But prioritization, you want to choose hyperglycemia over seizures? You got to choose this. So sometimes they give you questions and they will flip it. It doesn't cause bradycardia, it causes tachycardia. So don't pick that one. Seizures is the side effect. Which of the following findings suggest that the client may be experiencing the toxicity? toxicity? And this is caring for an an adult client taking the joxin. You have to know the side effect with the joxin, right? It's an adult, right? Um, and the way I talk about the joxin is I said, well, draw a caricature and start from the head. Start neuro, right? They have confusion. They have vision changes, yellow and uh, vision and scotomas. GI symptoms is number one. Then your heart is your cardiac, and then your kidney function. So that's all, all the things you need to know about the joxin. Now, which of the following findings in the NASH, uh, suggest that the client is experiencing the joxin? A pickup cost of 80, right? An adult, 60, um, a child, seven, less than 70, and a neonate, less than 90, is what you're supposed to know. Hypokalemia is a side effect. It can make the toxin become more toxic. Hypertension and sodium does not affect the toxin level that much. So hypokalemia. And then you should monitor the client for which of the following signs of drug toxicity, which drug. A client is receiving gentamicin for bacterial infection. I said this question to trap you. No, every answer choice, if it look bad, is an answer choice. If it does not answer the question, once again, if you see something bad here, but still it does not answer the question, don't pick it. We're talking about drug toxicity. Which drug? Gentomycin. Gentomycin. Think about your ear. Think about your kidney. Okay. And think about your neurons, right? So you call it causes autotoxicity, right? Hearing problem, it causes nephrotoxicity, right? And it causes neurotoxicity. So those are the three things that you're supposed to know. So the you have autotoxicity, you have nephrotoxicity, and you have neuro. Toxicity. Therefore, nothing like hypertension. I know it's bad. Nothing like bradycardia. Nothing like that. And diarrhea. It's here. There is auto here. Tonyanitis. That's what you pick. Nephro is not here. Neuro is not here. So don't pick an answer choice because you see something and you say, oh, bradycardia is bad. It's not the answer. And this is caring for a client. For science, NS is monitoring a client for signs of an, an, a teophylline toxicity. So we want to check for teophylline toxicity. Which of the following manifestation will indicate that? I've given you one of the answers already. Um, and so you should know that teophylline bronchodilator, it does not cause diarrhea, it causes tachycardia. 
And this is dedicating a client about signs of lithium toxicity. Which of the following symptoms should the nurse include in the teaching? Select or apply. One thing about lithium that you're supposed to know is it hates your kidney. That's the way it can cause toxicity, right? And then it can affect your neural and uh, musculoskeletal system, right? And then it can affect your GI uh, system also. So tremor related to your neural system, right? Kidney, if you pee a lot, you become dehydrated, lithium level goes up. GI symptoms, nausea, vomiting, you vomit, lithium goes up, right? It does not cause insomnia or upper reflex. It, it, may, it make your reflexes go down. So tremor, polyuria, and nausea. These drug toxicity, if you know the function of the medication, it becomes easy as much as possible. And then you monitor for which of the following signs of what? Hepatotoxicity. It has to be related to liver. A client is being treated for tuberculosis with isoniazide. Isoniazide causes peripheral neuropathy. That is the most common side effect of that. But, but when it becomes toxic, it affects the liver. Which of these signs and symptoms related to your liver, right? Weight gain, no. Weight loss, you know, when you eat anything, therefore you lose appetite when you have liver issue. And you start having nausea and vomiting. It's related. You have nausea, vomiting, you don't want to eat, and you lose weight. It does not cause hypertension. So, nausea and vomiting is the side effect. Which of the following findings are consistent with what? Sally cyclism, right? Sally cyclism. Okay. It's just a word. I put it there so that I can trap you. It's a salicylate, right? It's a salicylate. A salicylate is an aspirin derivative. A client is receiving aspirin for pain, relief, and develop tendinitis and dizziness. That means toxicity of the aspirin. I'm asking you which of these consistent with uh, aspirin toxicity. I just changed the word I use salicylism. It's the same thing, right? So when you take aspirin for a long time, you develop metabolic what? Acidosis. This is the content I'm giving you here right now. So you got to listen. Metabolic acidosis. What would you do when you have metabolic acidosis? You compensate with respiratory alkalosis. Therefore, you breathe faster. Of course, one of the side effects of that it's tendinitis, right? So that's what it is going to do. Um, and then you can have respiratory alkalosis associated with it, and then you get confusion. The signs and symptoms is hyperventilation. You're going to have tendinitis, respiratory alkalosis, and then we have confusion. A client is receiving vancomycin report sudden onset of redness and itchy of the upper body during infusion. Which of the following actions the nurse should take? There is always a trap with this question. Redman syndrome is common, right? Acute onset of redness and itching of the upper body with the infusion when you're getting vancomycin. When somebody is getting an aphylactic reaction, it does not localize to just the face and upper body. That is your clue telling you this is not an aphylactic reaction. This is what we call Redman syndrome associated with what? Um, vancomycin infusion. Therefore, what do you want to do? You don't need to stop the infusion unless it's so severe or it causes hypertension. Slow down the infusion as much as possible. Give them antihistamine that will prevent the flushing. You don't need to stop the vancomycin. You need to monitor the abruptness slowly. Because there's no need to apply compression. It's not an infection. And you don't need to increase fluid related to that. And this is monitoring a client on psychosporin following organ transplant. Which of the following findings indicate psychosporin toxicity? This is a very good question that I want you to pay attention. Whenever you see psychosporin, think about it, it's used for rejection. 
and we use it in uh, kidney transplant. When you see it related to kidney transplant, think about it. I give you a kidney, okay? I will know that your kidney is failing if your kidney function is going up. See, uh, uh, creatinine, BUN is going up, right? So the cyclosporine is preventing this is going up to tell me you have rejection. But if you have toxicity related to the cyclosporine, it's going to look like you have renal failure. It's counterintuitive. I'm giving you medication to prevent you, uh, you from having a renal failure, the rejection. Your kidney dies, right? It not dies, but it starts not working, and you look like you still have renal failure. But if the medication causes toxicity, it affects the kidney, it causes nephrotoxic. Even though it's control your kidney from rejection in your immune system, basically, um, it can cause nephrotoxic. Therefore, if they ask you a question about toxicity of cyclosporine, think about elevated BUN. It looks like kidney, kidney is, is not doing well, right? Increased creatinine, kidney is not doing well. Decrease urine output. Even if you don't know, test the key strategy. You've selected three, and if you don't know any of them, you have to move on. But one common side effect is tremor, because it's a tremor. You know, if it causes renal failure, the blood pressure um, is going to go up. So those are the side effects you should care about. Which of the following complications is the next likely to find in the client as a result of fluorescent toxicity? It's a bunch of weight. Forget about it. Complication if you're taking fluorescent toxicity. These are the two things you should focus on. If I take fluorescent, what shows that I have complication? A client is receiving fluorescent report with dizziness and muscle cramp. That is telling you they have complication. What is responsible for these signs and symptoms? Or what does the uh, fluorosemide cause? It does not cause hyperkalemia. It causes hyponatremia. That's how you control your blood pressure. It causes hypokalemia. And then it causes hypomagnesium. Know these three electrolytes related to uh, fluorosemide. And this is the end of it. Thank you for watching. Once again, join us at uh, Adapt and Class Review um and register and uh, come learn some content good luck or join our on demand or you can also join our membership on youtube take care of yourself and be good